so welcome to this week's video for those of you who follow me on instagram or even here or tiktok will know that i now have a 17 week old son um so this video obviously has a very happy ending or my story has a very happy ending and i want to make space for people who are in the depths of trying for a baby um Basically, I've put off making this video for so long because it's such an emotional video because it is one of the most sensitive topics I feel for women and in no way do I want to be a negative trigger for anyone. So I want to preface this video by saying to be kind to yourself. Um, one of the biggest blockages for me was the story of comparison and thought process of comparison um, for my personal journey to conceiving. So just be really mindful of that before watching the video. I also at times thought I would never film this video just because I feel sometimes who am I to talk about this topic when I had a baby with no medical intervention but I feel as becoming a mom that we're constantly thinking that our story isn't hard enough or again that story of comparison where my fertility journey wasn't as hard as hers or and I just want to take away that story of comparison so that I can make space for people because from my DMs anyway on Instagram and so many of you have reached out to me um, throughout this entire fertility process and conceiving pro process, my pregnancy journey and loads of you who are, are now also pregnant and becoming moms or have become moms alongside me which has been so amazing um, to experience with you all but a lot of people in the DMs don't feel like they have a voice um, either they are too scared to talk to their friends who found getting pregnant super easy that they don't feel like they can relate to them or also they just don't want to open that discussion and i totally get that so um it can be nice to talk to a stranger who is going through the same things so this is going to be my personal journey to conceiving my son i think one of the most amazing parts of social media is when you find someone who you completely relate to and it's almost like the universe has sent them to you and i'm praying that this video is that for you today and um, that you feel that you are heard that you're understood that you have a, a common ground with somebody and I know for me that that is just such a nice feeling and again I will reiterate that in my journey to conceiving we had no medical intervention so if you are somebody who are who is who is having to um, experience IVF um, or any other medical intervention I I'm so lucky that I didn't have to do that. I can't relate to that story, so I can only really share what I experienced and hope that that has some sort of connection with those people who are experiencing the same thing. Um, but my journey was definitely more of an emotional struggle. And I want to share that because I feel like it's a mindset game that got between me and my baby. And in the seven months that we tried to conceive, I want to share what I learned so that hopefully it can help somebody else out there as well. So basically we got married in September, 2021. I will actually put my video, my wedding video here. It's just like my favorite thing to watch. And we knew, myself and Connor, my husband knew that we would be starting to try for a baby straight away. All of my friends knew as well. It was something that I had talked about my entire life and I have friends. Most of my friends are from like when I was 12 um, from our high school or secondary school. So um, they all knew that we were gonna be trying straight away. Um, it was my lifelong dream to have a baby and a family and all i had really heard from my friends who had babies um was that they had all gotten pregnant pretty much straight away first go um and even though i was aware that i that might not be our story i definitely wasn't prepared for how badly i was going to cope with the pressure of trying to get pregnant 
And from day one of trying to get pregnant, I basically found I was worried 24 seven. Um, and we got married in September, in October, obviously we tried to conceive and my period was late and I was super excited, took a pregnancy test, it was negative. And again, for those who follow me will know that my period is, has been very irregular from dieting for 10 years. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's the reason and the stress that I put my body under emotionally and physically. And when my pregnancy test was negative, I then freaked out that my period had done its disappearing act again, which unfortunately it had. So instead of going from experience and knowing that in previous times when my period had stopped and had become irregular it was all down to either over exercising under eating and the stress that that put my body under or just emotional stress it, my body is extremely sensitive to my nervous system how it's working and how i emotional my emotional well-being so instead of kind of taking a second to acknowledge that and give myself space to work on that area of my life, I instead just labeled it as an issue and a fertility issue and checked myself in to, um, for an appointment with the Mar Marian Fertility Clinic in Dublin. Looking back on it now, I can say that I definitely just started this narrative of there being an issue, um, a medical issue or a fertility issue. And instead of realizing that my body was just in total fight or flight mode, I started this narrative and engaged fully in this narrative of there being a problem. And for those of you who are trying will know that it is just so all consuming in all aspects of your life that when your mind is thinking about something constantly, your body is holding on to that nar that story, that energy, that feeling, and literally every part of making the appointment, talking to the doctors, going in for the bloods, you know, every few days, it being on the calendar, little reminders here and there, waiting for the results. Um, it was all just adding and adding and adding onto the pressure of trying and again, just confirming to my body that there was something to be worried about, there was something um, to be on high alert about and that if you have struggled with your period will know that sometimes your period can stop literally because your body thinks you're in danger um, and if your body is super sensitive to your emotional well-being then it will just stop because it feels like your period isn't necessary right now you need to survive and it will put all its energy into that fight or flight or survival mode and it might seem dramatic but that is basically what my body was doing very fortunately all of our tests came back clear and there was no issue that they could see so basically to test then for ovulation and to see that i was ovulating and um, they had to have my period regular so they were going to give me this drug or a tablet that basically brings on a period i kind of challenged the doctor in this and said well what is it that is is there no issue that you're seeing that is a physical issue that my period has stopped like what if it is just an emotional issue and you know if we get my period back taking this tablet and you see that i there's no issue with my ovulation am i not going to then have to go back anyway and sort out the kind of regulating my period and she kind of didn't have any answer for me and that's what i found um, well, what I feel in the medical world is their job is to look for a medical issue and solve it. Um, their job isn't to regulate your stress. So I actually kind of just knew in my gut that this was a stress-based issue and I should really tackle that first. So basically it was then that I kind of took a breath. And I basically wrote out a list of the things that were causing stress and the things that were um, triggering the narrative of there being a problem or the constant worry um, and what would from my knowledge as a yoga teacher and a meditation teacher um, what is it that helps 
stress and relieve stress in your physical body and what can you do emotionally to help that so after doing that basically um the things that i did were i stopped all contact with mary fertility clinic and honestly this for some women isn't the 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 answer like some women it's it's obviously um, a really good idea to get the tests in the Marian Fertility Clinic. Um, for me, I know personally, it just wasn't um, the right way to go about it, but maybe in a way it did just give my mind that sense of ease, um, knowing that there wasn't anything physically wrong. But going forward, I knew with the worry and the stress and everything, stop all um, testing at the Marian Fertility Clinic. Second thing was to um I, I realized that it was again adding to the narrative every time i would get a message from my friends saying how's it going this month you know um my my family obviously all out of just wanting to support me my my mom my sister um my cousins my best friends they all obviously every time we would meet up would be like how's it going um blah 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 and that you you start to realize things that you're saying like oh i'm sure it'll happen this month or i'm sure it's nothing or or talking about the marion fertility clinic is all kind of it's almost clouding the path to letting go and to trusting and you start to realize i started to realize that like it was every time i was talking about it was was adding to this sense of grip or holding on to the idea or the illusion that i was in control of the situation that if i was talking about it and that if i could say that i was doing these things at the mary fertility clinic i was testing it made me feel like i was getting closer when actual in actual fact i wasn't like i wasn't helping myself um let go i wasn't trusting my body and i wasn't giving my body the the freedom to do what it was meant to do to create my baby so basically i sent all of my family members um and my best friends a message basically saying i'm closing the door to opening conversations about um me trying for a baby and i will if i need i will open the door and i will open dis the discussion again for some people that might seem quite isolating and you feel like you need to talk about it and of course that's okay but i just felt for me it was nice just knowing that i could be around friends and not have to be the person trying to get pregnant and failing and i didn't need the reminder every month that we were trying and um I didn't need them asking about the fertility results or anything like that it, just in case there was something that was wrong um, I could talk to my husband about it and he would give me the space to be open about it but I just didn't need those constant reminders also at this time so this was probably around November end of November myself and Connor were getting very much into manifesting and we were kind of starting to think about our goals for 2022 and I had actually found um, something I'd written in July of 21 and um, saying that I would be pregnant by July 2022 um, and I kind of just thought that this might be a little bit of a sign I'm very much into signs and I felt like it was a sign that I just needed to let go and give myself time that by July 2021 I would be pregnant I should accept this sign and just trust so between that and telling my friends and family that discussions about it were closed literally that night that i had sent that message out to my friends and family my period came back now there are other aspects of things that i was doing as well to get my period back which i think i'll go into another video because they're not that there's loads of things but i would like to just go into that on a separate video for people because i know there are so many of you who struggle with this issue and their period as well so my period came back i had also already booked into acupuncture with a woman i used to teach yoga with who was 
a massive inspiration to me just her energy she's like this just a warm hug in a person um, and I knew I was really comfortable with her and I went to her for a acupuncture session in December and then um, and what I will say as well about that acupuncture that night I felt like I was getting a fever um, and this often happens after my acupuncture where there I have a lot of built up energy or stress I get a fever and I get really almost sick from it um, and that night that happened so I just knew that it was releasing so much energy um, the first time I ovulated in December we obviously uh, tried uh, to conceive and in January I found out that I was pregnant this obviously was I just couldn't believe it I couldn't believe how easy with combining the manifesting the signs um, my period uh, letting go and I couldn't believe that how, yeah how easy it it was that we had got pregnant basically the first time um, after knowing that I got my period and I was ovulating so unfortunately very soon after that I found out from blood tests that I was experiencing a miscarriage um, and honestly I just I don't know why and I don't know how but I dealt with the miscarriage very well I was just in a really good space mentally I feel I was doing a lot of work on just meditating every day and accepting and trusting and I just had this feeling that I knew that this wasn't our baby and I trusted so much that that this pregnancy was meant to happen that that, that pregnancy um, was meant to happen again just to allow myself the process of trusting my body and knowing that I could get pregnant was just in itself a huge source of hope and um, a huge step in trusting the path of trusting my body and I think that yeah I just knew that I was meant to get pregnant but that that baby just wasn't meant for us and I knew in my gut that the baby that eventually chose us and came into and would come into our lives was the baby that we would never be able to see our lives without and because of that miscarriage I knew that that had to happen in order for our baby to be with us so it was a really for me it's a weird thing to say but it was a positive um that miscarriage for me personally was a positive and i realized that there are many women who experience much later miscarriages we our miscarriage was very early and um, and also women who experience multiple miscarriages and and it is never it's not a positive thing i'm not saying it's a positive thing but for me personally on our journey when i look back it was a positive obviously because now I can say that as well because we have our son um, but I actually did at the time um, I was surprised at how calm I was in dealing with it but in saying that I will say that it turned very quickly sour um, I also obviously in experience of miscarriage opened the discussions again with my friends and family because I was had told them that I had a miscarriage and again um, this is where I find it's just so difficult to balance that um, needing support from your friends and then protecting yourself from um, you know false hope or things that people say um, in only to support you but you're in such a vulnerable place where you're clinging on to things and there were a few things that happened that really negatively um, affected the next few months for me trying again to conceive um, one thing was again we were so deep in this manifesting space that um, Connor had written that 
we would be pregnant in January 2021, 2022 in his goals. And I was like, oh my God, amazing. We were pregnant in January. So it, it turned from manifesting very much into um, projecting our future or controlling our future, um, which isn't a safe space to be in. Um, it's not trusting. You fall into this negative place where you are again uh, thinking that you have control over the future and control over what happens, which you don't. Um, also in the mis uh, having the miscarriage I uh, friends said things and my doctor said things like um, you know it's a really good thing you got pregnant which is true but they also think said things like and you'll get pregnant really quick a lot of women get pregnant really quickly after a miscarriage because your body al almost has that muscle memory um, and it's extremely fertile so then I was in this place of like the every month that we experienced not getting pregnant afterwards I was like that's another month away from my miscarriage where my body is is not having that muscle memory and maybe is less fertile and so again holding on to things I was very much in this place of clinging on to things that people were saying um we also had done these 90 day letters um if you're interested this is it here I did a video on it um but I would read my 90 day letter um which in short basically write you write out what you have achieved before it has happened um in 90 days and we were meant to celebrate everything we had achieved in the in the 90 day letter on the 4th of april and i would read this letter every day after my meditation and it just started to make me so anxious Every day I felt like I was reading the things that I hadn't achieved yet and as the 4th of April approached I was seeing all the things that I had failed to achieve and it was almost like time was my enemy and every day was a day that we hadn't conceived or every day was a day that I didn't have my baby and basically I had to stop reading the letter, I had to stop engaging and manifesting because I really just couldn't find my way back to doing it safely and correctly. I'm going to be ending this video here, but I want to promise you that there is going to be another video coming basically in the next few days after this um, that I think will really help. But unfortunately, this video is gonna end by me saying that that there is no magical trick. And I, and I feel, I feel, really bad saying that because I know how desperate I was when I was trying for somebody to tell me that to tell me that they could tell me my baby was coming and that I was going to get pregnant with full certainty and getting comfortable with the reality that you never know and that you don't know and nobody can tell you that you will get pregnant. It's a really hard pill to swallow, the hardest pill of, the hardest thing to accept and it took me, in the next video I will explain more about it but um, the month I got pregnant with my son, I will say that the month I got pregnant we decided to have a sex every second day. Um, I was exercising as usual. I was anxious and stressed every single day. Um, and for some reason that month our baby chose us. And I don't know, I don't know why and I can't tell you how unfortunately and I wish more than anything I could um, because I want for every woman who wants to have a baby um, I, I just want that for every woman I think it's just the most important thing um, in our lives and I understand how important it is and I say that about the anxiety and you know the exercise because that was a huge thing you know, when you're told by professionals, oh, don't exercise or there's a lot of things online. Either professionals are telling you that, you know, you shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z exercise while conceiving. 
um, you know, oh, running is bad or CrossFit is bad or whatever, you should be doing slow yoga, all of these things. Or people who were like, oh, it was when I was, I let go and like released all my anxiety that I got pregnant. Um, that for me was a constant anxiety as well that I was like, oh, I'm so anxious today. This, is, this means that I'm not going to be able to conceive. Oh, I needed to go for a run today to clear my head so that I'd be less anxious, but I shouldn't be running because that means I'm not gonna conceive. So I just wanted to put that in there because that is, I know from questions I get on Instagram, you know, about exercise or anxiety or what I did. Um, I want you to know that I personally got pregnant when I was super anxious every day, obviously because I was trying for something that I really wanted and I didn't know if it was going to happen. And I also was exercising just like I usually would and I still got pregnant. So it doesn't mean because you're anxious or you are exercising that you will not get pregnant. Um, I hope my next video will, will give you more um, to go by and will explain more because there are things looking back that definitely I can see either blocked us or assisted us and I would like to share a video on exactly what I wish I knew or what, what I wish I did more of and what I wish I did less of or maybe not I wish I had because then I wouldn't have my son um, Abraham but in going forward into trying again which I'm already anxious about even though it's it's in the distant future um I know I will apply these things in try in to protect myself emotionally um trying to conceive the next time because it is a lonely place it is a scary place and um I hope that I can share a little bit of wisdom um from someone who struggled emotionally in trying to get pregnant um I want you to make yourself a cup of tea and look after yourself and I will chat to you in the next video. I really hope this video helped you. Um, if you would like to be alerted to when this video is going live, you can just press the subscribe and click notifications. Um, I really hope there wasn't too many triggers in this video for you. Um, I am here for you if you ever need to chat or need a friend um, to literally just dump all of your thoughts onto. Uh, you can DM me on Instagram anytime. I am here to chat. Um, lots of love, Molly.